Now then, I met uh, our next guest about two years ago when Shane Nicholl, he lives in Appley Bridge, took on 15 marathons. That was in 2015. Now it's 2017. And Shane's going that little bit further, literally. 2,017 miles is his target for this year, which means running a marathon every five days for an entire year. And next week, seven marathons in seven days. Shane Nicholl, good morning. Have you completely lost the plot? Have you? <laughs> I do think that some days, How yeah. are you going to do that? Um. Well... I don't know yet. It's... You've not thought about it. <laughs> Got a plan. As, as soon as I start to think about it and worry about it, you know, that's when it becomes more of an issue. But at the minute, I'm just winging it to see what happens. So in about six hours' time, I'm going to start running my first marathon of seven for Mental Health Awareness Week. Over the next seven days I'm going to be running a marathon every day all around Leeds and West Yorkshire and just and hopefully encouraging others to join me on this 180 mile adventure. And then at the end of the week, if I make it that far, I'm going to finish the challenge by running the last 13 miles with the Leeds half marathon. I haven't really been able to put any kind of training into this. The idea really only came to me about a month ago and I spent most of that month injured and to be honest I've got no real idea if I'm even going to complete this. This is by far the toughest thing I've ever tried to do and I'm far, far from ready for it. The nerves are really beginning to set in now. Any kind of confidence I had that this was possible has long since gone. but. This week really isn't about the physical challenge. For me, the most important thing is about bringing mental health to the forefront of everyone's mind and making people aware just how widespread these conditions are, encouraging those that need to to have a conversation about it and hopefully reassuring sufferers that they're not alone in this battle. About five minutes time, I'm gonna start running my first marathon of the week. Well, I don't think I'll get nervous about this. This is going to be interesting. So 12 miles in on day one now. Day one of my seven and seven. Just dropped onto the Mimo Valley Trail. Before I head across to Round Hay. And then back across to Pudsey. Let's do this. My depression sort of started when I was a teenager. I'd already been suffering with it for a while when just in the space of a couple of months, my brother left for university and any sort of one I was particularly close to at school also just left. And I ended up feeling quite alone and isolated. I would often withdraw myself from social situations, whether that was locking myself in a room or just sitting on a bench outside of the edge of town but then it kind of just took a back seat for a while until 2013 when my girlfriend's health 
drastically deteriorated. MRSA outbreaks, dangerous skin infections, lengthy, lengthy stays in hospital and a mini stroke all within the space of just a few months. This was all happening whilst I was juggling being a carer and trying to hold down a full-time job and inevitably it just became too much to handle. But it wasn't just depression. I often suffer with anxiety, insomnia and stress and they all just seem to just sort of build on each other. Every night I would go home and just lay wide awake until the early hours of the morning, getting two, maybe three hours of sleep. And then the cycle would just repeat. Whilst I laid awake, my mind just couldn't help itself but to just run over and over and over the previous day's events. And then I just began to get stressed out about the situation. Tension headaches would come on and then so too with the nosebleeds. I was sort of having difficulty concentrating at work and it just ended up having a big effect on my ability to remember things. It just all began to snowball and I went from breaking down in tears maybe a couple of times a week to every night coming home and just lying down in a dark room and just crying myself to sleep pretty much every night. And for a while I was just in denial about it. It took a couple of very public breakdowns for me to pluck up the courage and get around to seeing my GP about it. Already got a bit of an interest to start today. Gonna go get this x-ray. Day two. <clears throat> Already feeling a bit stiff from yesterday. And in hindsight, I'm pretty gonna regret choosing where I'm running today. Maybe 3,000 feet of elevation across Ilkley Moor. It's a bad day to run across the moors. I need to get back to the car so I can get some water very quickly. Still got another 12 miles to go. I'm just coming up to three hours. This is going to be a long one today. I had to take a bit of a diversion from the plunder route. Still have about 10 miles to go and I was drastically run out of water. I may have stopped for too long because my legs seem to have seized up as well. I've got four miles left, do you want to join me? Yeah? By if you mean yes. Take that as a no. day two and I'm really beginning to doubt that this is possible. I knew that at some point my body was probably going to fail me but if at any point I lose my head then the whole thing's in danger of not being completed. I really can't fail this. There are sort of many ways in which the depression sort of manifests itself 
but one of the ways it's really managed to dig its claws into me is the feeling of just never feeling good enough. Being the youngest of four children has really given the depression something to sink its teeth into. As I just constantly find myself comparing myself to others. I've just always felt this need to try and prove myself to everyone else. I just feel like I'm not good enough. Everyone knows I'm not good enough and it's only a matter of time until I get found out. This insecurity is something that I carry with myself on a daily basis. It just leads to me pushing myself to breaking point and just to try and satisfy these voices. You know, whether that's just working till the early hours of the morning to try and cover up the fact that I don't feel like I'm good enough at my job or putting myself in under undue pressure just to try and achieve things to appease someone that doesn't exist. When you constantly feel like nothing you do will ever be good enough. No matter how hard you try, no matter how much effort you put in, you're always going to be a failure. So, this morning I'm faced with quite a bit of a dilemma. Don't know how well it's going to come out on this camera, but seven hours out on the moors left me with quite a bit of sunburn. Inevitably, last night that turned into heat exhaustion. At three o'clock in the morning I was up, feeling really disorientated, feeling sick, sweating and shivering for about half an hour. Common sense would kind of suggest that I take a day off today. Just a day to sleep day to try and recover from the past few days. I think the worst thing I could do today is go out and run another marathon. Because I honestly don't think I'd be able to finish it. And that would just jeopardise the rest of the week. So I take today off to recover. And hopefully I've actually got a chance of running at least six marathons this week. So it's just gone five o'clock and I spent the best part of the last four hours asleep. Still feeling anxious about going out for a run in, in the sunlight. So I've come up with a bit of a backup plan. complete. Very unorthodox run. 3am this morning. It was looking very unlikely that I was going to be able to run today's marathon. But after a few hours sleep and a drastic change of plan, just managed to sneak one in. I think one of the things that's kind of shocked me over the past few years is how willing people have been to talk to me about their mental health issues. And whether that's friends, family, or even strangers, a lot of people have opened up to me and talked to me about their experiences, many of whom I didn't even know there was any sort of illness there to begin with. The current statistics say that one in four adults will be diagnosed with a mental illness at some point during their life which means that's a, that's a friend, that's a family member, that's 
a colleague at work. But despite all this, there's still this taboo that exists around mental health. That is a weakness and that is something to be ashamed of. The last year, over three quarters of the suicides in the UK were, were committed by men, with suicide being the biggest cause of death for males under the age of 45. In the UK, men are committing suicide at a rate of one every two hours. Men whom society has failed because it sees depression as a weakness. Society that deems the phrase man up as being acceptable and one that has helped ingrain the archaic notion that men do not speak about their emotions. This restrictive way of thinking and the fear it puts on, on sufferers is killing thousands of men every year. Today's marathon is going to take me along the Leeds Country Way from Garforth all the way around the north of Leeds across Trapley Bridge. About four miles in, exactly four miles in. Let's get running again. Just hit 10 o'clock and at 27 miles I've just finished today's marathon after the physical exhaustion of Tuesday's marathon and mental exhaustion of yesterday's it's good just to get a nice steady and relatively simple one in the bag it's four down three to go At times I sort of definitely feel that the word depressed has just lost all meaning. It's a term that people use for just having a bad day or, or just feeling a bit down. And this misuse of the term just helps perpetuate the damaging myths of the condition. Depression isn't an illness that you can just wish away, same as you can't just walk off a broken leg. It's, it's, it's a disease that can affect anyone. Whether you're male, female, young, old, it doesn't matter how good your life may appear to others, it can just attack you and just consume your life. You know, it's something that can creep up on you slowly or just hit you out of the blue. I've lost count over the years, the number of times I've been told to snap out of it, or it's been implied that my depression is a personal weakness and that it's my fault that I'm depressed. I guess to an outsider, it can be very easy just to look at someone and think that they've got no reason to be depressed and that they should just get over it. Having suffered with this for 10 years, I can tell you that's not a case of laziness. It's certainly not attention seeking. Depression doesn't care for your definitions of whether someone has a tough life or not. It's a selfish disease that will just pick and choose who it wants.
seven and a half miles in of Fridays in my fifth marathon. Properly starting to feel tired now. Just about 18 miles and then another two marathons left. made the mistake of stopping and sitting down to get some food out. Let's just see stuff a bit. I'm just about to approach the west stretch of the canal as well. In about a mile or so time I'll be coming off the canal. Because it's gonna start getting really dark soon. Let's see if I can run. Fourteen more miles of shuffling to go. Finally get to come off the canal now. And hopefully onto some slightly easier to run roads. Creepy 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 path. I'm not a fan of this creepy creepy path. Just hit 20 miles. Should be another 6.2 to go. But I think I'm at least nine miles from home. It's 11 o'clock, so I don't think I'm even gonna finish before midnight. And my watch has just stopped. Whew, I'll be glad when this one's over. Six minutes past midnight. It's quite late finishing Friday's marathon. <laughs> a few unexpected diversions to keep me away from the canal. I seem to add quite a lot of time onto it. Got about a mile to walk before I get home. I need to eat, shower, get some sleep. If you go to a doctor, it's very likely that they'll tell you that exercise is just as effective for treating depression as medication and I've noticed over the years if I have a, a few days off or a week off without running or doing any exercise then my mood definitely does drop. When I first started running 10 years ago I did so primarily just to lose weight which looking back now was having a big effect on my depression at the time. Since then, I've continued using exercise on an almost daily basis to keep the black dog at bay. And it's not just the endorphins that running releases, it gives me time alone. Just a few hours away from my life to try and put all those thoughts to one side and just be where I am. I've also found that spending time in nature and being around animals, practicing mindfulness has had a big help on my mental health over the years. For a long time I was really wary about taking medication. I was anxious that it would just make me feel numb. Given that I was quite prone to apathy, I didn't really want this situation to be exacerbated and the idea of turning to medication felt like a very definitive decision. It, it kind of just felt like I was accepting the fact that I would always suffer with depression and the idea that I'd need medication just to feel normal, it felt like I was giving up. 
Saturday, so the end's almost here now. 130 miles down. Just another 52 to go. to go. My legs are really, really starting to wake now. Really hope I don't have to do a loop of the car park. Six marathons, six days. Now let's find some dinner. Personally, I've found that talking is the one thing that really, really helps when dealing with my depression. Whether that's with a trained therapist or a friend or a family member, or sometimes even a stranger. Just finding someone that will listen to whatever thoughts are going on in my head at the time really, really does help. And I found that blogging about my battles with mental illness, it sort of really helped me process a lot of the thoughts I have and just work my way through them. In many ways, I guess I just feel really, really lucky that I can talk so openly about these thoughts. It gives me a way of talking through them and just processing them online. 150 miles, and about 30 hours later, it's Sunday. It's around half six in the morning, and it's my seventh marathon. Of my seven and seven. It's been a lot of running to get here, but it all comes down to this just 13 miles until the start of the loose half. finished a 13 mile warm up. I think it's about 10 minutes to go until the start of the first wave. At the minute I'm on a desperate hunt for food so I think I'm going to rest for a bit and then just join one of the lighter waves. We are underway to start as we go. The runners are running. down. There's three more miles to go. Yes! <laughs> 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 
like social media. Well, well done, Dragons Running Club. 180 miles later. 37 hours. And my seven marathons in seven days for Mental Health Awareness Week is complete. Coming off the back of no training and two injuries. Being told to rest by my osteopath, it was always always going to be a tough week. But despite all that, just about managed it. I want to thank anyone that supported me this week, whether it's coming along for a run or just sharing my posts. If you were the random stranger that I hugged today at mile three, then you'll be watching this and I want to thank you too. It's, it's been a very tiring and emotional week. I'm kind of glad it's over. Depression is something that will affect everyone that is watching this video, whether that's directly or indirectly. And I just hope that I've convinced someone, even if it's one person, to have a conversation about their mental health. It's, it's never anything to be ashamed of. And, and the more you talk about it, the more you will begin to realise this, that you are not the only one out there that feels like this. There are millions and millions of people battling mental health issues on a day-to-day -day basis. But it is a battle that does not have to be done alone. 